Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Abgeschnitten Podcast here on YouTube and everywhere where you can find podcasts. Today, we're going to have an English version because today I'm very much excited uh, to have the opportunity to interview a very special guest and a friend of our podcast today, which is Mr. Kevin Boone. Hey. All the way from Belgium. All the way from Belgium. <laughs> to Berlin. <laughs> to Berlin. To, to and be a part of this amazing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks for making the time. And this is also why we talk English today. And uh, I am, uh, yeah, I feel uh, humbled and uh, honored because uh, you gonna, guys are going to learn more about this gentleman here to my side. And we've tried to, for a very long time to have you in our podcast. So even more excited to have you here. So welcome to Berlin, my friend. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing very fine. Thank yeah. you. It's a bit warm today here yeah, in Berlin. Yeah, it's warm. 26 degrees. 26 so. degrees. You know, summer is finally arriving. If I knew that in advance that we probably had to change the date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. So, I'm very honored and I'm very amazed and glad that I'm here. Perfect. That sounds. That's a good start. That's a yeah. good start. So hey, we're going to talk a lot about um, you know you being an entrepreneur and uh, <laughs> uh, and you know uh, and about inspiration and the power of uh, you know leading uh, it and building a team and stuff like that. But before we go into that, maybe um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the person Kevin Boone and uh, where you're coming from, what you're doing on a on a daily basis. So what are you doing for a living? What I'm doing for a living? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a tough question. Now, uh, you want the short version or the yeah. longer version? E or yeah, between man. the two? Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> you're the artist, so feel no, free. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Kevin Boone. And um, I, what I'm doing for a living is I'm enjoying life by cutting people's hair, educating people, and enjoying being an entrepreneur in the hair industry. Well, that is really short. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> But this sounds, uh, that's an amazing thing. So basically, you're... Uh, You're running a successful. Uh, you're running a successful salon business out of a city called Ghent, which is uh, yeah, it's in Belgium. It, basically it's a, it's a village next to Ghent. Um, so uh, yeah, I started uh, 10 years ago. Started to, um, to I, I find my wife. She's an amazing hairdresser. And then uh -huh. to make this story a little bit shorter is never been to the hairdresser school. Never been to a barber school. And from there on, met my wife. And 10 years ago, you know how it go. The barber scene was a little bit like a low, low side. It was not the, the society that is running right now. So it's it's getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But 10 years ago was um, the hype of the old school, you know, the the, the rockabillies. And uh, I was like, hmm, there's something interesting because I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I had an ego probably back in the days when I was young. And I was like, no, I never go do a hairdresser school because I was, I was feeling like this is something for... You know, for 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 people who only are interested in beauty and stuff like that. And uh -huh. then back in the times, raising up in Brussels, it was, uh, yeah, I, I was feeling tough. You know, I was a football player. So I told my mama, like, hey, don't worry about me. I will be uh, come the, the best football player in the world. But... I mean, broke my knees two times, uh, and next to that, I mean, I was I was oh very talented, but uh, not for that. But uh, yeah, ten, ten years ago, I uh, met my wife, and um, she's an amazing hairdresser. And I told her, yeah, why well, you should open your own shop, and then find a shop, open it for her. I I get the goosebumps, like, oh, this is something interesting. Maybe I can cut the men's hair, right? Okay. Uh, and from there on, um, she yeah, she she gave me a pair of scissors. From there on, I start to. She show, just showed me like, okay, you need to do the pair on the scissors right there, and then just using your thumb and okay, just cut <laughs> hair. You know, I don't have time to to educate you. Just you know, do your thing. Um, and then I, yeah, to make the the, the story shorter, I, uh, I I went on YouTube how to um, practicing uh, fading skills, um, terminology of hair and stuff like that. And uh, now, 10 years later, we uh, we're running a business who's called Cup. And next to that, we're really giving education all over the world. Okay, so just let me quickly revisit what you just said. So you had a career as a professional football player ahead of you. You had some injuries. So yeah. you were still talented and very ambitious in terms of your sport. But then Mother Nature came came against it. So yeah. And that forced you to rethink a little bit about your ego and what you can do. And then you met your wife and she kind of inspired you to pick up a pair of scissors yeah exactly I, i mean 
uh, yeah, this is something, yeah, this has happened, right? So, um, yeah, I was uh, signing my first contract, football contract, and then six months later, yeah, I was injured, and then uh, the official big contract, yeah, was done. It was last, so mm. I had to play in lower divisions, but knowing that I already had an operation. But uh, in terms of that, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, I truly believe that things happen for a reason. And um, it happened because I truly believe that someone above me, um, <laughs> I mean, if I call it, I can call it God, right? So uh, God brought me this road to, uh, to this hair industry. And uh, the first time that I, I took the pair of scissors and the clips in my hand, I felt immediately a connection and I was like, the, the, even the first haircut, I knew immediately like, okay, this is what I need to do. But wow. And from there, it started. Yeah. Wow. So well, that, that, that is deep, man. That is deep. <laughs> <laughs> so like a calling, you know, so yeah. it, like uh, karma happened, you know, to you and then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, to be honest, I'm glad that I, I, I. I took the road that I had because before that I was, I mean, you know, you, you trained from your six years old, you know, and from, from in the part when you became 12 years old, you know, it become like high 11. And now, I mean, the, the football industry is very tough, you know, um, but it, it, I mean, he helped me a lot of things, things of um, who I am right now. I think of uh, being disciplined, going to, uh -huh. go to the training every day, you know, Uh, make sure you you play with your mates, not with yourself. Uh, uh, running for other guys, you know. Uh, and I feel that this is what I had to do when I was younger, you know, uh, next to other things. Uh, but it made me disciplined and motivated, and and the ambition that I had for for becoming the best football player, yeah, that changed into becoming the best hairdresser or barber in the world, you know. Um, What I am not, but I, I still am, yeah. right, in my head. Uh, and so this is what I'm thinking every day. Uh, and this is what provides me to do uh, every day better and better. So this is really interesting. So um, so what you're saying is that you take you took your, everything that you learned in, in, in terms of becoming a professional football player, like the skill set, yeah. discipline, you know, putting in the hard work, doing extra work also for other people that play with you on the pitch. Yeah. And you apply that now in today's business and also in pushing you to become the stuff that you already believe being the best barber, but obviously putting all the work in that it takes to become better every day. Yeah, exactly. This is amazing. So you're, so you're, you're taking something and, and this is what I like because, you know, in, in our podcast, we talk with a lot of entrepreneurs also where they take the inspiration from, where they take the, the drive that they have to build something up from scratch. And I, I really like that point so that you that you've be able to take all the stuff that you learned in, in professional sports and apply it in the hair industry. Yeah. Amazing. And and obviously the inspiration was there as well when picking up I mean if you feel a connection, that's yeah. that's a that's something, you know? Yeah, I when mean when you pick up the scissors for you, the first time. You mean, you need to do that exercise, it's crazy. I mean, I do it in, the, in our academy, in our school, uh, even with my employees and at the barber shop uh, and at the salons. I ask them the question is Yeah, what's your biggest, what's your goal in life? You know, how you see yourself in the next five years? And uh, you need to do that exercise and ask 10 people that question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then come back to, to, to yourself. And, and, you know, the response on that is that, I mean, 80% doesn't know what they want to do, you know? And I told them that, yeah, just be patient because of the moment, it's just like this and you... You know, your whole life can change. Mm -hmm. And it becomes to me as well, like, this is like, okay, this is what I want to do. And you just know it, you know? And then you get the force. And I mean, I, I can, I can, you know, I did a lot of job, 20 jobs before. And uh, I was also like searching, okay, my, my football career was probably a little bit done. I mean, I was still playing football, but not for, for a professional way. Um, so I had to do other jobs on the side. And then I was in a situation, I was 20 years old, 21 years old. And uh, always, because I'm, I'm very ambitious, you know, but my biggest ambition was lost, you know, becoming the best football player or, or professional or, you know, being a football player for Millionaire. living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when you're 20 years old, yeah, obviously, yeah, you're dreaming of becoming a millionaire <laughs> and uh, having everything and fancy cars and fancy house. But that changed, you know, because, I mean, 
It depends. <laughs> <laughs> If you're uh, Messi or Ronaldo, then you're... <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, but what I was trying to say is that, um, yeah, it's something, it's something, yeah, special in life that sometimes uh, the moment comes to you and you know immediately that you change your mindset. And I see a lot of friends sometimes str struggling about the, uh, asking them the question to themselves, like, what I should do in my life, you know? Yeah. Why? Or they ask me the question, what I should do in my life? I say, yeah, you, but you need to ask your question to yourself, you know? Yeah. And I can understand that people are, don't have a response on that immediately. Sometimes it's just one thing that across you or, you know, you go to the sauna and uh, I don't know, you, you, you get a massage and you say, oh, fuck, I like that. And then you ask some questions to massage and before you know, you, you be, you're becoming a masseur and, and you get <laughs> passionate about it, you know. It's, uh, so you need to experience things. And um, I truly believe it's, it's not looking for it. It, 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 it crossed your path. There. It will find you. Yeah, it will find yeah. you, yeah. Amazing. So you just mentioned that you started 10 years ago you said that you i mean i know that you did a lot of stuff with I mean, you just quickly um spoke about it and touched it it's like so you youtube was a big source of inspiration and youtube was uh, also basically your academy yeah so i know my strength and my strength is that i'm uh, they call me a little monkey mm -hmm. yeah the monkey is like monkey see monkey do <laughs> uh, and at that point um yeah i was definitely the monkey like I don't, I'm very strong on visualizing things, right? So visualizing things and I can adapt to that. Yeah, very cool. And sometimes some, there's other people who, you know, uh, visually don't see it mm -hmm. and they need help on a practical way. Uh, but it, I, I mean, that's not bad, you know, but this is my, uh, this saves my career is because some videos, I could adapt that in, in real life, you know, in, in how I could in hair. So it did help me a lot, uh, that talent that I have, is when I see things I can, I don't need people maybe to, to show me how to, to handle or take the clippers. No, if I see it, I can, I can then, maybe because before that, also in the footballing, you, you adapt, you know how to move to create an option for, for the midfielder or the, The, or the striker, you know, mm -hmm. same as dancing, you know, the dancers are people who are visualizing things. So there's a choreographer, yeah, and you need to do the same as a choreographer, yeah. And then some people can't dance because they don't visualize it. They need to take, to have the choreographer take the, 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 the feet and the hand like, okay, you need to move like this, you know? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, I go, I go a little bit too deep in it, but uh, no. This is why uh, YouTube saved me, and this is why YouTube was my biggest education. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but this is amazing talent. So this, is, so well, I mean, you, you see things. I mean, I like that. I like that quote that monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, because doing is actually the the most important part of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you get feedback, and then you 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 can progress. And I think you know, this is a gift. You know, if you if you are a creative person, and then you can really see and and learn from other people doing and watching mm -hmm. them. I think this is a, this is an amazing talent and amazing gift. So how do you? I mean, you talked about uh, visualizing ideas. I mean, where do you get your inspiration from when it comes to working today? Because you said that you're in the business now for 10 years. You touched a little bit on your academy, the mm -hmm. school that you're building. Um, people probably have seen your um, at the biggest you know show here, hair show that we have in Germany, Top Hair, mm -hmm. just recently, where you did a main stage show for the you know. Um, for a brand, so where do you get your inspiration from? To be honest, I was looking for inspiration for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a good question because, again, as this question to 10 people, right? <laughs> and it's a, you know, it's an open question, <laughs> so a lot of people will say, I mean, I get inspiration by this dude doing nice haircuts and stuff. What I, who I am as well. I get inspired by other barbers and hairdressers and stuff like that. But what is inspiration in first, you know? What is yeah. inspiration for Where you? does it start? Yeah, yeah, for me, there is inspiration and there's also like inputs mm -hmm. about things, you know? For me, inspiration is, is kind of a first inside of you that helps you to walk a path with a kind of energy and love and passion. 
Um, and I'm realizing searching my biggest inspiration. And it was something very difficult for me to find it. And then I realized it's like basically my biggest in inspiration. And maybe this can sound for some people arrogant, but it's myself. You know, is the is the guy, uh, the young guy that uh, walked the path to to find himself in in the universe and and you know want to make a change in couple of things and and creating a vision of what maybe other people doesn't see. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not about other people or no, it's just about that little boy that has a vision. You know, and and a love and passion of of what he's doing. You know, even when he's barbering or playing football or helping other people I always get inspired by myself yeah <laughs> yeah this uh, sound let's 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 uh, elaborate a little bit on that topic so what you're saying is you were searching for inspiration for a very long time until you realized that hey hold on hold on a minute what is my inner drive why am I doing this right yeah so you so you basically your inner child was kind of firing up the the Kevin Boone that we have today so to push you there where you are today yeah exactly I mean if if my inner child or the my childhood was like that I was not a, a good student right mm -hmm. so um I was also I had concentration problems um ego problems doesn't matter you know uh but there's a mm -hmm. difference because if I'm voting the pet as the the complete students who you know learn about everything you know from A to Z reading books and stuff like that then I think if I'm being that kid then my inspiration would be other people mm -hmm. right because but the reason I feel that my inner child is my biggest inspiration is because he walked a path that nobody else did he he, he has his fantasy world you know inside him he has kind of visions that he could not talk to other people, you know, and I know it's so. getting deep, but um, yeah, did it help me to become uh, uh, the person who I am today? And I, it's not that I'm already glad or with, with what I want to achieve and, and stuff like that is, I mean, it's, it's deeper than that. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit about um, it in uh, concrete terms. So, you know, I'm sure not everybody has been at the Top Hair trade show in in Düsseldorf uh, at the beginning of April. Um, yeah, but let's let's share a little bit of the insight. So, so what happened there? So, you had the main stage um, show. Uh -huh. So, why don't you share a couple of things that happened and uh, the idea that you had behind the whole thing? Because the show was called Underwater, right? Yeah. So, and uh, you know, maybe you can share a little bit your idea and what you try to bring across to the P. I mean, it's a couple of thousand people watched it. And then even after afterwards, you know, it went almost viral on our TikTok and your Instagram and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like people obviously really love the creative uh, approach. And mm -hmm. obviously uh, you left a, a mark, <laughs> let's yeah. put it that way, you know, as, as being the new, maybe the new kid on the block. But, you know, maybe you can tell a little bit about your inspiration and the program that you put together. So first of all, there are a lot of uh, aspects that you need to know. So first of all, we start with the title, right? Yeah. The title on the water. So if I'm asking you, uh, you don't know me, yeah, perhaps. And then uh, I ask you uh, the question like, oh, there's a guy, Kevin Bone, you know, um, he's doing an on the water. The co the, his show is called on the water. It's a hair, top hair show. Yeah, yeah. What are your first thoughts? Well, how is he going to do that? Because doing hair underwater is uh, is almost like doing hair in space. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but what's what's your feeling about that? You're getting like you 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 taking you having some some questions about it, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, it triggers your emotion. It triggers your yeah. inspiration immediately. You sort of think about how is that going to work? Yeah, and this is why uh, I'll. This is how deep I think about the concept mm -hmm. is. It's to create questions, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, the head industry is growing very fast and the barber in industry is growing very insanely fast and it's growing every year and year and it's getting bigger and bigger, right? So being a barber in Belgium, you need to think as well as uh, kind of how you, how you want to represent yourself, right? Or how you can 
create a concept that people get the trigger and so much question on, okay, who is this guy? You know? <laughs> yeah. And I have that feeling, to be honest. I, I still have the feeling that people don't know me. Uh, um, um, so I, I have the feeling that I have, after the show, I just, it gave me a new start. Yeah, a new a new a level in my career, uh, but to call it on the water was on purpose to create questions to the audience, so people had the feeling like, oh, I need to see that on the water show because is he really gonna put everything on the water? Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. But the most important thing is that I'm inspired by a little boy who is called Jan, mm -hmm. you know, and the collection is created by, by for him, by him. No, it's a real story. And uh, Lil Jan is a little boy uh, from 10 years old, and he comes at my barbershop. And uh, at that time, I mean, everybody knows you're my manager, right? So uh, at that time... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah. it's a rigor warning. <laughs> yeah. So at that time, um, you call me and you say, hey, man, listen, the brand needs a, a title for your show, you know? Let's top her. Uh, you need to give me a title. What are you going to do? How are you going to call it? Yeah. And uh, what you don't know is that I had an intern conversation with little Yen <laughs> okay. about his underwater world's monster fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I, I call it like, okay, this has happened for a reason. Let's call it underwater. Yeah, cool. And afterwards, yeah, it was kind of also a very good trigger to, um, to, to get people like, okay, what's going to happen there, you know? Yeah, and so yeah, I think also it was very good in terms of uh, branding because uh, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously I've seen the show, but it's like uh, everybody realized probably that you know it was that the whole topic was almost like being underwater and everything that had to do with it. Like you know, also maybe after, I mean, even for myself, it like was after the crazy years that we had, you know, like where you felt like oh, I can't breathe anymore, I yeah. need more air to breathe, you know. Yeah, it's like exactly when you have the feeling that. I have when I'm underwater, yeah, you know, like exactly. snorkeling or diving or something like that, yeah, and you're yeah. running out of air, then yeah. <gasps> it's, you know, it's you're getting get... claustrophobia. Right? Exactly. And then, you know, so you know, on it, on the water was a title of, yeah, of, of, of the little boy's story, right? Mm -hmm. Next to that is also of the, the society where we live right now. Also the after the pandemic that represents every head was that, After the pandemic, it, it feels very, you know, we had to rebuild. Yeah, and tough. Toughness. Yeah. And, and there's a beautiful word that you said is that sometimes you don't, you have the feeling that you don't get to breathe. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it's the same feeling that you feel on the water or you, like you said, snorkeling, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get close to phobia as well. And this is exactly what I wanted to create is that it's beautiful how people create an imagination on the, just a title who is called on the water who is nothing to do with with basically the show at all, yeah. or, or the, the trade show so this is what i love to do you know i love to uh, create something where people you know get inspired or see themselves as well you know and this is for me very important to, to create a statement um, um after a collection or a show that i do so when you were thinking about the name and uh, the concept that you put together with you know everything that you put on stage so you started to feel think about okay how do how do you and what is the emotion that you want to give them or how do you approach the thing like that so first of all uh, yeah as you know um for the people who doesn't follow me i'm 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 a uh, started as a bob uh, next to that i became an educator um and and next to that I became uh, a brand expert, you know, <laughs> kind of a brand expert because I really know that master I made, of branding. Yeah, master of branding, um, and and I, I truly believe that um, the branding that I create took me on the stage at Top Hats, not because of the beautiful haircuts that I do, but because of the trigger that I create to other people, right? Uh, so the collection on the water, um, for me. Before that, I did other collection with purpose. First of all, I did collection who is called Afro Season, Tokyo Season. These are aesthetic, beautiful collections, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't have like a emotional or or a meaning behind it. It's just we just do it because it's awesome. You no, know, it's it's nice. It's it's beautiful to see it. 
Yeah, you know? great hair, great clothes, great exactly. makeup, whatever. Exactly. And then I started to make collections with a purpose. Uh, perhaps hashtag don't panic that you know as well. Um, so it was a collection uh, um, with female with short hair and to create a statement like even female with short hair can be very beautiful and sexy and be very powerful as a woman, you know. And next to that, there's also a story behind it. Um, and I, I, I wanted to take that word further. Like, okay, it's nice to do collections, mm -hmm. but it's even better if you get inspiring people by doing a collection, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, like I said, in branding terms, yeah, people buy emotions and not, not a product or another service, you know. They come into your shop because they are attractive to you or yeah, they, they are emotionally touched by you, you know. Uh, and this is how I like to work. It's to create something that people with world reminder, right, get excited about it. At the same time, emotional maybe. Uh, and the collection that I did on at Top Hair, uh, yeah, was representing everything of that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take all the boxes. Checking <laughs> every boxes of that. So, um, yeah, I was very, very, very um, glad that I had the opportunity to do that on stage. And also uh, the team that I created uh, at the top here on the water show. Uh, yeah, everything, everybody was perfect. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was glad. Big team effort. Yeah, big team effort, definitely. S so for everybody that uh, feels the urge now to work on their own presentation and maybe do a main stage show at Top Air, so how many people were involved in making this one a success? Uh, you, mean, you mean backstage? Yeah, backstage, on stage, 20, around 20, the organizational team. 26, 26 people or maybe more, 28, yeah. 26. <laughs> yeah. I lost the number. <laughs> yeah. It was a couple of months ago. Yeah. I still have the numbers. You have the numbers, <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but you know, thirty maybe, yeah. Yeah, so, thirty people. But it's but it's really interesting. So I mean, for everybody that wants to do something like that, I mean, I know public speaking, especially in the business world, is a big thing. You know, where you work yeah. on your brand, like putting yourself on stage. You know, facing the challenge. You know, going through it and stuff like that in terms of personal development. So, but <laughs> what it takes to do that, because you know, for everybody that hasn't seen the show and doesn't know what it is, it's like. It's a massive stage. It's like tiered seating, like in an arena. It's like 2,000 people watching you. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, 30, 30 meter, 40 meter long stage. Yeah. So what does it take to actually have your stuff together and go there and present and deliver a message? Believe. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to, first of all, you need to you believe, believe in yourself. yourself. Okay. And you need to grab your balls and go on stage <laughs> and definitely go there and say like, hey guys, I mean, to yourself and say, just do it, you know, just do it, just do it, believe in yourself. And um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what, how, well, I mean, it does, it does matter, obviously, but it doesn't matter on if there are different op uh, opinions about your show, you know, the purpose is like, if you're truly honest with yourself and you believe in yourself and is this the message that you want to cross, then you, you just need to do it, yeah. Yeah, I find that really interesting because, uh, I, you know, if, you know, obviously being in that business for such a long time and, you know, being in, uh, around the world on different stages with different sizes, mm -hmm. um, there's a, all type of people that, you know, do something, try something, learn something. So basically what you're saying is also you need to believe in yourself. You need to be confident in your message and in your in your vision and then just do it. Yeah. So yeah. you do not. So when you put a concept together like this, you're after you have came, come up with the idea, after you managed to have the idea of what you trying to deliver in terms of how you want people to feel, you don't care about the individual opinion that is maybe coming back because, you know, if you go in a trade show environment, you know, there's obviously all, I, I think a lot of people that, you know, are not up for massive creativity and deep communication and emotion. Mm -hmm. They just want to hang out and meet colleagues and stuff like that. So yeah. do you care about that or? No, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that, was clear, that was a clear answer. Yeah, that was clear. Um, <laughs> no, uh, the only thing um, that I care about is, uh, is the message, yeah. right? how I cross that or if people like the, the fact that how I do it. I mean, 
I need even people to criticize me as a male because it's it you know it gives me more energy and power and also it gives me more um, energy or, or or stuff to think about it as well. So I, I, they educate me as well. You know, if people have critique on that, they educate me as well. But this is an interesting one in the hair industry. So how I see the hair industry is uh, it's a beautiful hair industry, but it's also you know always the same. Uh -huh. um, and this is what I like, you know, because uh, I don't like being comfortable on doing things. I like to put myself in an uncomfortable situation and create something because I was feeling uncomfortable, something great, you know, and that gives me the adrenaline and, and the power. And, and basically I creating my own drugs to, to get high, <laughs> you know, get high on your own supply. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, but what, what people need to know is that, uh, I, I think there's a lot of hair artists, or uh, that does other things that then only hair as well. You know, mm -hmm. I truly, I, I, I already know barbers that they are great in hair cutting, right. But they are also amazing painters or they are also amazing graphic designers or photographers, right. Um, and what I, what I like is that use that, you know, or um, if you like clothes and you want to design clothes, yeah, take that as a full package, you know, and yeah, show that to the people. Why, why should I, I'm not a person who will only show haircuts, right? I'm, and I, I'm creating a style maybe that is not only for hair industry, it's just my style. This is how I see things and I just do what I love to do. That is creating and uh, yeah, hopefully inspiring people as well. Yeah, but this this is a very interesting point because you know we talked about we touched about on branding. Now you're talking about your passion and um, what you love doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you obviously you know something that you're really good at. So I mean, the third and then final piece to find your ultimate positioning when it comes to you know salon business or any other business is then problem solving for people. So What problems do you solve with inspiring people? I mean, what, what happens if somebody sits in the audience and gets completely inspired by watching uh, the show of a Little Jan and that you, that, you know, that you presented to them? It's like, what was the feedback from the guys? I mean, I know that today we talked about, you know, a couple of people that came out to you after the show, like uh, from all around the world. What, what was their response? First of all, um The first thing that uh, a reminder, reminder that uh, what I loved about the feedback is that, uh, that this was unseen mm -hmm. in the hair industry. You do so, you think you you changing the game, um, and this is what I really appreciate of people saying that. And this is exactly what I I, I want to try is I want to try to build a community of, of young talented people who truly believe in in them art, right? So I don't see hairdressing or barbering as as a job. I see that as a art statement mm -hmm. as well. And I hope that if people seeing this show or the people who saw the show uh, were inspired, like, okay, we can do more than j only just haircuts, right? We can inspire people about then moving moving emotions uh visual arts graphic graphic arts um yeah hair cutting as well you know but the full co complete packages so it was a collection was called underwater and people saw the underwater monsters and the underwater monsters were the dancers right and the ghost that represent the fantasy of Lillian's fantasy were the the underwater ghost, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end, there was a big ghost and he represents the society, right? So I truly believe that this is a theatrical moment where people feel like, oh, I see myself there as well. I know what he want, He tries to get, right? And the, at the end, obviously, you was there, it's, it's a big, massive answer to all this. You know, the, the big answer of little boy, yeah. Um, yeah, I think also, you know, sorry to interrupt, but I think also it's, it's a, a, you, you, what you manage to do is like you have the platform so that people can identify themselves with, you know, Leil Jan and the story and the fears, you know, of the society and what's yeah, happening exactly, right now. So yeah. it was like also meeting the zeitgeist and at the same time you managed to give somebody, I mean, people the option to 
join in on your presentation and say, oh man, it's me. That's that right. when I was small, you know, that, you know, was, yeah. I mean, in school I had those problems, you know, people were mobbing yeah. me or whatever. So I think there was a lot of, you know, stuff in where people could really relate to your story yeah, yeah. and uh, the presentation. For me, I saw that as a one time opportunity. <laughs> and I think, uh, um, hopefully there will be another time. Yeah, exactly. But even the other ones, I will see that as a one time opportunity. Okay. Yeah. And I, I took the stage to, to bring a message. Yeah. And, um, I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to do that. And so the next <laughs> opportunity will be the same. I will took this, uh, that chance and create that as a feeling like, okay, this is my only chance to prove it and to show this message or to across a, ch a message. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, uh, for everybody that has, uh, was feeling the urge now to watch the show, um, <laughs> you, you know, we're gonna put your Instagram into the show notes. Uh, we also put the YouTube video where they, people can see something yeah. maybe from the top here, they can see the full show for themselves. Yeah. Uh, we put it in. So we, I strongly recommend that you guys check it out, yeah. you know, check it out. And then, Maybe also leave your comments here in the uh, underneath the podcast because uh, we are on YouTube, you know, Spotify. There you can see also the video, and then on all the other platforms where we have audio podcast available. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to feedback as well. This was just a little reminder that uh, people can get more than just listening and watching us. For everybody that is watching the video or listening to the video, um, you maybe check out the video um, because uh, it's pretty hot. For the first time, I'm not wearing a jacket today <laughs> <laughs> because, like, it's really summery here in this barbershop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and by the way, yeah, thank you very much to Johannes from The Blade. You yeah. know, that is again, once again, again. our podcast studio Amazing. here in the center of Amazing. Berlin Mitte. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much for the hospitality. And, yeah, so, I mean, um, Kevin, you know, back to the back to the subject. So, uh, yeah. you inspire people. So, uh, I know that, you know, you've been traveling so far as ever since you know because you know that had an impact also on your schedule mm -hmm. so what happened after top hair so after top hair um i was uh, reduced uh, to more events yeah uh, barbie events um <laughs> amsterdam greece uh, now we are crossing uh, hamburg uh, also paris who called me um so trades uh yeah directors who called me personally Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I hope to uh, to do the underwater show again. I really hope so, um, and uh, to make it even better and better, you know, and uh, to more <laughs> to even create it more freaky and excited than that it was already. So and there's all, all also a big documentary of uh, 20 minutes on our YouTube channel uh, where you can see the. The preparation of the show, the creating the robot L24 to uh, to the communication with the dancer, the choreography that we created, uh, the clothing styling that I created as well. Uh, Is it already out? No, we are still busy because... Uh -huh, um, it's coming. Yeah, our, we are seeing our schedule. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to put it already because then otherwise people know how the show is going to... <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So, it's, so really, it's really a breakdown. Yeah, of the it's, it's gonna be uh, basically <laughs> it's gonna be uh, after the the latest show. Um, it's gonna be kind of you can you can see it as a after movie. Yeah. So after after MCB in Paris, probably in September. Yeah, hope so. Um, okay, so so you know a lot of things changed. You know, a lot of people had good, very good feedback from you. Um, so they told you left the market, changed the game. That inspires them again. You know, to do uh, to come back better and bigger than they did before. So this is amazing. Uh, yeah, and 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 you're having the opportunity now to show um, parts of. Um, your the content, you know, uh, across Europe. You know, so you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, Barber Society Live in Amsterdam right yeah, after. Yeah, that was amazing as well, yeah. So a uh, Barber Festival uh, in Athens, so in Greece, mm -hmm. uh, called New MCB Paris. So there's a lot, couple of other events that said, okay, fantastic, you know, Kevin Boone is obviously uh, somebody that we want to have here. So how important is, is branding for you? You just touched up on this in the, in the, uh, in the very beginning of this podcast, Uh, but, you know, how important is branding? Because I know that you also have a program, mm -hmm. it's called Master Your Brand, but, you know, how can people that are listening to that podcast, doesn't matter if they have a salon business or a beauty business or, 
you know, whatever business, mm -hmm. uh, how can they use branding to set themselves apart from, from the rest? 